Hey guys, it's Lee with Steel Raven Farms. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know now before we get too far into this podcast that Fenrir <clears throat> is feeling a little spicy today. So he you might hear him trying to play with the other goats. Uh, or the other goats. <laughs> dogs. Dogs. He's a dog. He doesn't think he's a dog, but he is a dog. Sorry. Um, anyways, I wanted to go over some quick questions that you would ask um, before you buy a goat. Um, and so there are a few questions that you should be asking before you get goats. Um, and some of them are pretty self-explanatory and then others are, um, I guess more personal in nature, right? So some of the first ones would be, um, are you capable of caring for goats, right? Um, are you able to handle their care? Things like that, right? Those kind of more introspective, personal, to, you know, person to person questions where you really do need to make the decision on whether or not this is a good idea for you to have goats. All right, guys. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, we had to pause for a minute because we've got vultures circling the property, and it's of course making the dogs go nuts. Um, and that's fine because that tells us that there's a problem, right? You know, we don't, we try not to just yell at the dogs to stop barking. We want to make sure that they are, you know, if they're barking at something, what are they barking about? Um, but it's also really annoying because Blue is not only a great Pyrenees, but she's also um, German Shepherd. So she's a mix and she barks for everything. Um, and it drives a barking dog that's barking for no reason drives me crazy. But a barking dog that barks for a reason is my best friend. So go figure. Anyways, <clears throat> we're talking about things that you should be asking, you know, uh, before you get goats, right? Um, a lot of people are under the assumption that goats should be cheap. Um, well, why would I spend $400 on your goats when um, I can go over here and get a goat for 50 bucks? Okay, well, let me explain some things first. A $50 goat versus a $400 goat are not the same at all. Um, I have registered goats. The only two goats well, three right now, one of them is going to go to freezer camp. Um, but two of my like 15 goats on my property are unregisterable, right? That means that they are not registered. They do not produce registerable babies, but everybody else is. I have also put a lot of time into my goats. I've put a lot of effort into my goats and I'm not going to let my goats go for, for nothing right now. My withers, my boys, I want them to go somewhere before they go to my freezer, right? I would prefer to. So a $50 goat is not going to do you very good. In fact, there's a very real possibility that that $50 goat is going to cause you way more headache than <clears throat> somebody who's selling their goats for more. Now, um, unlike puppies um, or kittens or whatever, um, specifically in the livestock world, the, the longer or older that that animal is, the more they're going to cost. Okay. That's just the reality. Um, <clears throat> I've never understood the idea of, well, we're going to sell this, you know, two year old animal, whatever it is for 50 bucks, just to try to get rid of it. Do you know how much money you've put into that animal over the life of it? You know, a two-year-old dog is worth far more than a puppy because I've already put all of that time, energy, money, vet expenses, whatever, into that animal. And so I need to be compensated for that if that is an animal that I'm selling, right? And so when you're looking at, so I have, <clears throat> I have four goats that are up for sale right now. Um, I have two nanny goats that are about, two, three years old. Um, and then I have two babies that are, and they're all does, right? And the babies are cheaper than the nanny goats because I have put a lot of money into those nanny goats. I've raised them for the last two years. Um, I have, you know, 
put work into them. I've had to take them to the vet. I've, you know, the whole shoot and match. So I want to make sure that I get some of my money back. Um, whereas the babies are a little bit cheaper because I haven't put that much work into them yet. I haven't put that much money into them yet. Um, but those babies are, you know, right now they're about a $200 baby. Um, their mama is a blue eyed, um, doling. So those babies carry those genetics. Mama produces a ton of cream that is unheard of in goats. So that their, her milk lines are, are good milk lines. So the very last thing that I'm going to do is sell those babies for nothing just to try to get rid of them. Now they can stay here. And if we can't sell them, they'll go into my freezer. I'm not going to sell them for less than they're worth just to make a quick buck. Um, now with the boys, the boys are a little bit different because, you know, you, it's very difficult to sell boys. Most, most people want does. Um, bucks are a lot harder to sell. So the first question that you're going to ask yourself after you've made the decision that, yes, I'm going to get goats. I have good fencing. I have good shelter. I have all of that. Um, the very first thing that you're going to ask yourself is why do I want goats? Do I want them because they're cute? Awesome probably don't get an Angora goat, okay? <laughs> because you will end up having more responsibility with that goat because you've got to shear it. You've got to maintain that, that fiber because it's a fiber goat, right? If you are looking for um, milk, a milk goat, you probably don't want to get a Kiko. That is a huge goat that is a meat goat or a boar. That's also a meat goat. Do they have good milk? Sure, sure, but that's not what they're bred for. They are bred to pack on the the muscle and and the and the pounds, right? So first and foremost, you need to figure out why you want goats. Then once you figured out why you want goats, you need to find a mentor in your area, and or a vet in your area. Okay, now there are a ton of uh, places in the United States that do not have large animal vets. Right. So you now we are blessed beyond belief because we actually have a couple large animal vets by us. And our large animal vet is amazing. And they actually come out to the farm. Now we can load everybody up and take them up to the vet's office or she can come out here. And we've actually done it where she's come out here and she has taken care of our dogs as well. Um which is fantastic because when the smallest of your dogs is 75 pounds and you're trying to load all four of them into a vehicle, it's a lot of work. We usually actually can only take two at a time because they are so big. Um, you know, my, my dog's blue or excuse me. So bear is the smallest at 75 pounds. Fenrir is the next smallest at 80 Blue is the next smallest at 110 and Cody is 130. So try getting that into your car. <laughs> and I have like, I have a pickup truck, but like it, I would not be able to take anybody with me because they would take up. And then they, you know, of course somebody would step on somebody and then it'd start a fight and it's just not worth it. So we take them up two by two or we have the vet come to us, which is great. Um, but if you don't have a vet in your area that will see goats, you have to get a mentor in your area that will mentor you about goats. Um, now I have both. I have a mentor. I have a mentor that's out of state and I have a fantastic vet who has goats. So I hit the trifecta and I got really lucky. But if you don't have those things, you need to really consider what, what you're getting yourself into because your goats will try to unalive themselves. It happens all the time. Um, so do you have those things? So why do you want them? Do you have a mentor or a vet? Preferably both, but I'll take a, Honestly, I would take a mentor over a vet any day of the week because I can go to my regular vet. Now, again, I have a vet that sees goats, so I, I don't have this problem. But if you've been going to the same vet for 10 years, 15 years, and all of your dogs get seen there, there's a really good chance that you could talk to your vet and say, hey, I need this dewormer. I need this antibiotic. I need this for my, you know, whatever for my goats. And there's a really good chance that they will write you that script. You know, you just got to ask them, you know, what's the worst thing they're going to say? No, 
okay, <laughs> you know, moving on to the next thing. So, um, after you ask yourself, you know, and, and, or find a mentor, why do you want your goats, whatever the second thing that you need to look at is predators. Um, during this recording, we are currently dealing with vultures that are circling the property. Um, there could be a cow, you know, several properties over a, a deer or something that has died. Um, and they're circling for that reason. Well, unfortunately, they found that we have goats and they will snatch up a baby goat. Now we've got baby goats. So, you know, I have paused this video several times and I'm paying attention to Blue or this um, this recording several times because Blue gets all worked up and I have to pause and I have to go look and see what she's looking at. That is literally her job is to alert us when there's things going on. Um so what kind of predators do you have? Are they neighborhood dogs? Are they human? Are they vultures? Are they coyotes? Like, what do you have? And I'll put down in the show notes the, you know, what I call predator load and, you know, what you can do to kind of fix some of that. Um, next would be uh, my next question before you get goats would be, are you squeamish? Okay. Now, I don't, I'm not squeamish. There's very few things that get my ick going. Um, and thankfully, none of them are related to goats. Uh, I'm a paramedic in real life. So my ick factor, the things that gross me out are probably never going to be the same things that gross you out. And that's probably fine. Um, I don't get freaked out by blood. I don't get freaked out by vomit, poop, pee, birthing fluids doesn't bother me. Now, I don't want to see your birthing fluids. But a goat's birthing fluids doesn't bother me. Uh, Champ, when she had her triplets two years ago, um, Stella, her that group, um, I had to go in and start turning babies. I was literally up to my elbow in this goat trying to get babies turned and heads pulled back the way they're supposed to. And that was my first ever kidding like the very first time that a goat had gone into labor and was birthing on the property with me, she, it was, it was bad y'all. Um, the first, the baby was alive and I was trying to get it turned and moved and pull everything together. And, you know, cause it's supposed to, the baby is supposed to come out with its nose on top of its front hooves. And the first baby was born, you know, with her hooves coming out or sorry, her front, one front and one back hoof coming out and her head was pushed back. And then, so I fought with that for about 10 minutes trying to get the baby out. Um, and the baby came out stillborn and then Stella was born completely normal. And then the third baby was also, you know, born with her head back. And so and it was three dullings and all three of them had blue eyes and it was heartbreaking because that was my first one and I lost two out of three. And so that was absolutely terrible. And if you can't handle that, you need to make some decisions on whether or not you want goats because it is not, it's not super common that you're going to have to go in there and get babies out. But it is the reality that you probably are going to have to go in there and get babies out. So you don't want to find out, you know, midway through a birthing that it grosses you out to the point you can't do it. Um, and, and that, and it goes in so far as you're going to have blood in your freezer, you know, in vials in your freezer, you're going to have poop in your, uh, or not your freezer, but you're in your refrigerator. You're going to have poop in your refrigerator. Of course, it's going to be bagged up and, you know, it's not going to be like little goat berries just running loose inside your refrigerator. But if you can't get to the vet until tomorrow morning and you collected poop yesterday, now you got poop in your fridge for two days. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and I, and it happens all the time. We have a dedicated like little itty bitty teeny tiny little shelf in our freezer or in our refrigerator that that's where we put goat poop, goat blood, you know, whatever. That's where we put it so that it's not, you know, just hanging out on the shelf with the rest of the food, you know, um, and we double bag and all that stuff. But the, it is the reality. Like you're going to have poop in your refrigerator. Like that's just, it's just how it works. Um, and if you're not okay with that, you need to reconsider having goats because 
it's a very real likelihood that it could be in there for a couple of days or, you know, it's going to be hanging out. The blood's going to be hanging out in a vial in your fridge until it's ready to ship. You know, it, welcome to goading. Um, the next question that I would ask uh, yourself, but also the, the place, you know, whoever you're getting your goats from is, do you allow the goats to have horns or do you uh, disbud or are they pulled? Okay, now the difference between pulled and dis... Sorry, I had to pause you before the dog started barking. Um, trust me, you don't want to hear that. Um, so pulled is when a, a naturally horned animal, right? So uh, cattle, sheep, goats, horned creatures. If they have horns at birth or they have the little nubs starting to form a few days after birth. Um, that is called, called a horned goat or horned creature, whatever it is. And then if they don't have those little nubs shortly after birth, they are a pulled animal. Okay. And so basically what that means is that they have a genetic mutation that keeps them from growing horns. Um, and those are actually pretty highly sought after because a lot of people don't want to disbud, but they also don't want to have horned creatures. So, you know, a polled creature is simply one that is genetically mutated, naturally genetically mutated to not have horns. Um, and then disbudded is when a human removes those horns. Okay. Now this is a hot topic amongst, uh, farmers, whether it's cattle, um, you know, sheep, or goats. And those are the, the main three, right? Um, th this is a hot button topic where you have people like me who are like, natural is the best. It looks cooler. You know, they're able to defend themselves, whatever their reasonings are. You know, we let them have their horns. And then you have others that are like, absolutely not. They get stuck in fences. They break their horns. And then I got to deal with that. Nope, not even going to happen. We just butt everybody. And everybody has their opinions. Everybody has their, you know, this is what we do. And so this is what's right. And you just got to go with it. You know, you ask the breeder what they do. Um, and then ask yourself what you're comfortable with. Originally, we did not want horned animals because we have kids. We, you know, we heard all the horror stories about them getting stuck in, you know, goats getting stuck in fences. And after having, uh, four goats disputed in one year, I was like, absolutely not. Nope. Nope. They can have their horns. Doesn't bother me at all. Um, and I've been popped in the face. Like I almost broke a tooth because of horns and it is still, I'd rather them have their horns. It, it really does allow them to protect themselves better. Um, not to mention it looks cooler. Um, and you have handlebars. <laughs> like, I think that's the best part is the fact that you have a, the ability to grab hold of them, you know, if necessary. Now we don't do that unless it's, you know, holy crap, I've got to hold on to you right now. It's, you know, life or death, whatever. Then I will grab a hold of the horns. Um, but I try really hard not to do that. Cause how would you feel if somebody just came up to you and just snatched you up by, you know, your ear, eh, that's going to cause a problem. Um, so I try not to do it very often. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The next question that I always have is worming protocols. Um, are you, what is, again, this is a, a twofold question. What do you want to do with your herd and what is the practice of the herd that you're buying from, right? So if you buy from me, I do not deworm unless necessary. And the other side of that is preventative deworming. And that's basically where people, you know, the, the, uh, the owner, the breeder will deworm his goats, his or her goats every single month, like clockwork. And I don't do that. Um, and excuse me again, this is where being a paramedic comes into it. Um, I know what happens with the overuse of medication, especially medication that is meant to kill s stuff, right? So um, antibiotics is a prime example. When you constantly take or use antibiotics, you will create superbugs. And unlike dewormers, 
that, you know, antibiotics, you know, they create newer and stronger antibiotics. I'm not going to say regularly, but regular, regularly enough. Um, they don't do that with antibiotics or with um, dewormers. So what's ending up happening is, is that you have a ton of goats that have been dewormed with this particular dewormer. We, we'll call it, you know, safeguard for you know, th that particular one. Every single month for the last 10 years, this farmer has used safeguard on his herd and now it's not working. So now he has to double the dose of safeguard or triple the dose, or he's got to use it for a longer period just to get his herd clean all the time. And what happens is, is like I said, you have to triple it the next time, quadruple it. Now you got to use something else because it's not working. And I like when we have to deworm, we do, uh, it's a, dual dewormer system. And basically what we do is we use one dewormer or sorry, the one and two dewormer on the first day. And then we use dewormer one for the next three days. And then we use that same deworming, you know, one and two, what is it like seven or 10 days later? I'd have to look and see what it actually is. You know, we redo it two days later or sorry, seven days, seven to 10 days later. And we do it again. And we do that, you know, one and two, um, and then, you know, two, three days of dewormer one or dewormer two, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and that's how we deworm our animals, but we don't do it all the time. And we don't do the whole herd. We do it strictly based off of who needs it based off of their famacha, their poop. What do we see in their poop? Um, or we run fecals and we say, okay, well, you know, this particular goat has, you know, poor body condition, this, 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 this. Okay. Now we need to deworm them. Um, and then at the, at the end of the day, like you have to understand that when you are talking about purchasing goats, there is a lot that goes into it. It is not like going and, you know, picking up a goat and shoving it in the yard and saying, have fun and walking away and never doing anything with it. Like, Honestly, I probably put more care, like day-to-day -day care, into my goats than I do my dogs. Now, I do the day-to-day -day training with my dogs that I don't do with my goats, but there is so much more that goes into keeping goats healthy than people even realize. And they usually find out the hard way that there is more to it, right? They're sitting there going, oh, goats are easy. I don't have to. And then their goats are dead. And they're like, well, how the hell did that happen? And I'm like, well, did you check them? <laughs> you know, did you keep an eye on them? And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, well, that's why they died. Like, I hate say I hate being so harsh about it, but that's the reality. Like, if you don't keep up with your animals, especially goats, they're going to die on you. And then you have to, you know, explain to your kids why the goat's dead. Um, cause I had to do it. Uh, the, I actually go more in depth with a lot of this stuff in goat 101. That's my, uh, beginner's goat guide. If you will, it covers, you know, basic feed, shelter, water, uh, fencing, why to get goats. It goes a little bit more into depth about, um, you know, body condition scores and herd health and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and I'll link that down in the show notes, but if you, if you decide that you don't, you know, don't want that, which is cool. Um, the other thing that I highly recommend is herd health sheets. Now you can make your own. Um, I have some for sale and I'll put that in my, um, in the show notes as well. But basically what it is and it's the best thing I've ever made. And well, I won't say it's the best thing I've ever made, but it's up there. Um, but it is something that I use weekly and that is, I, it's the herd health tracker. And what it is, is every single goat has its own tab in a spreadsheet. And like I said, you can make your own. I'm telling you how to do it right now. Um, and I track, you know, the date that I did a herd check, right. Come out, you know, on 1128 and I do a herd check and, you know, Stella, her famacha is a two, her body condition is a two and a half. Her hooves need to be trimmed. You know, she looks fine. We just need to do hooves. And so I will go in and I do this for every single goat, every single week. It takes about, it probably takes about 30 minutes 
because I've been doing herd checks forever, it feels like. But because I can do this, I can now sit there and go, okay, well, last week her FAMACHA was a three, and now it's a two. So now we're, we're you know, a FAMACHA one is wonderful. Now we're trending in the right direction, right? Or, you know, I come back and I look and I see that, you know, she, Last week, her FAMACHA was a one and now it's a two. Ooh, okay, now we need to keep an eye on her. I need to, you know, make sure she's not getting diarrhea, make sure that next week it's not a three, you know, paying attention. And it really does help you track trends because one of our goats, uh, Choco, Choco Taco, I don't know how she got that name, but her name is Choco Taco. Um, and we had done a herd check on a Sunday. We, we always do them on Sundays. Um, did the herd check and... By that Wednesday, she was super lethargic. She's laying in the grass. You know, she's chewing her cud, but she just doesn't look right. And Jared brought it up to me. And I was like, well, she was fine on Sunday. And he goes, no, there's something wrong. And I was like, okay. So I went over there and I checked her. Her famacha was bone white. It was a five. And a famacha of five is they are knocking on death's door. Like they are going to die any second. So we turned around and we started throwing the kitchen sink at her. You know, we we hit her with the you know, both the wormers. We gave her red cell, we gave her pig iron, we gave her all the things. And because I had checked her on Wednesday, or sorry, on Sunday, I knew that she was okay on Sunday and that this was a rapid thing, right? And I and we've had it go the other way. Like, you know, once we, you know, I got into the herd health check and I started, you know, we did this, 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 and this. And we were able to track, you know, every three days we went out there and checked on her and made, you know, we checked on her every day. But every third day I went in and I actually wrote down what we were seeing or you know, are the treatments working? Is she bouncing back? And that little goat, she's still here. She's still kicking. Hopefully the vulture doesn't, you know, go away with her, but, you know, she's still here. And it can happen that quick. Goats are not very hardy. Now they can be bred for hardiness and some of them are naturally hardy, but they're just not hardy creatures. And so if you don't keep an eye on them, you it can go sideways really quickly. So I very I encourage you to really consider getting goats before you get goats. If I knew now what I knew then, I'd probably still get goats, but I would definitely do it a, a lot differently. You know, I, I would not have gotten goats where I got them from. Um, I'm glad I did because I have Bella and Bella is a fantastic goat. Um, She's full of piss and vinegar, but man, she's super sweet. When she, when she finally gives you her trust, man, she's, she's great. She, and right now they're all fuzzy and she's super soft and, uh, I love that goat. Um, she's a pain in the ass, but I love her anyways. Um, check out the show notes. That's where all, all this stuff will be. I'll put in the blog post as well. So if you want to have like a, a quote paper copy of this, um, it'll be in there and I hope you guys have a good day. Um, it's cold. So make sure y'all stay warm.